The Flow Builder is the main tool to set up your Telegram bot to welcome new subscribers, assist users, sell products, and notify a manager about users' questions and the chatbot. You'll learn how to set up and use the builder elements to create the chatbot structure. Choose your bot. Navigate to the Bot Structure tab and choose a trigger. By default, there are Welcome Message, Standard Reply, and Unsubscribe from Bot Flows, and you can create your own new triggers to get more functionality. The Welcome Message flow starts after a user subscribes to your chatbot, for example, after clicking the Start button. Users can subscribe by following a link to your bot, finding the bot on the Telegram app by its username, or using a website widget. This flow introduces your bot to users. Here you can write about your bot and its features, how it can be useful, what information the bot can provide, how often the bot will send messages, and the content of those messages. You can connect the welcome message flow to the launch of other flows. The standard reply flow will launch in response to any user question that is outside your bot scenario, or by sending an image to a bot. Here, you can add a message with information that a manager will contact them during business hours and reply to the user. You can set up a cooldown interval for launching a flow that is between 1 minute and 24 hours, so your bot won't launch a second time within the specified interval. The unsubscription from bot flow is the flow with one message element that will launch after a user unsubscribes with the slash stop or slash unsubscribe command. You can add keywords, triggers that your bot will react to and launch your flow. Click create a new trigger. Write your command using one or several words. For example, you can use the words order, tickets, price, or delivery. You can also set up ignoring identical keywords here. After creating a trigger, click Create a Flow and start editing it. If the user enters a part of a keyword linked to your command, your bot will suggest prompts such as a button with the name of your trigger. When the user clicks the button, the flow will launch. To disable this feature, go to your chatbot settings and select the Disable Bot Suggestions when entered messages do not match a keyword option. Let's take a closer look at the constructor elements that you can use to create your flow. You can choose the first element that launches your flow, message, action, filter, API request, and randomizer. For example, using the filter and API request elements, you can check the subscriber's data and personalize your communication by starting your flow only for those users who have or do not have the requested data or branch your flow and send different messages. Using the randomizer element, you can diversify your chatbot's auto replies or create an A-B test. To make an element a start element, connect the desired element to the start. To see which trigger starts your flow, click on Start. Using the message element, you can create a message of any type and add various blocks to it. Text, image, file, audio, video, buttons, user data request, and so on. In the text box, type the text of the message. Also, you can add emoji and variables to personalize your messages. To add a variable, click the brackets in the right corner of the text block and choose the variable you want to add from the drop-down menu. If you have a value for this variable in the user's contact information, they will receive a message with the value filled in. You need to add a button or user input element to the message element if you want to connect it with other elements in your flow. To add a button, click Add Button. Name your button in the first field. Note, you are limited to 20 characters. Also, you can add emoji to the button's text. Type the text of button, continue flow, link, or payment. For a button with the link type, you can also attach a link to a third-party resource. To allow the user to continue the conversation by clicking on the link button, you need to activate the link tracking option in the chatbot settings under the General tab. You can add up to 13 buttons for the continue flow type and choose the layout that suits you best, from one to four in a row. For example, the user will see buttons placed one, two, or four in a row like this. You can also add another type of buttons, quick replies. Preset replies for chatbot users, which does not save user data, but you can use it to expand the number of buttons. Likewise, you can use buttons as an additional menu and improve navigation for your chatbot. To add quick reply buttons, click Quick Replies in the editing panel of the message element and enter a name for the button. You can use emoji in your button text and add up to 10 buttons to the message element. For the user, the buttons will display like this. After sending the next message, 
quick replies disappear. To quickly get a message with these buttons, we recommend creating a trigger and a flow on this trigger. Then, place the flow in the menu, which is always shown to the user, and expands when the forward slash icon is pressed. Diversify your messages by using visual content that relates to your text. You can upload an image from your computer, or upload it from the link. There are no limitations to the size of the image, but note that the image resolution for Telegram will be 500 pixels in width and 200 pixels in height. You can also add a caption and send the information to the user in one message card. You can enter up to 1024 characters and add emoji and variables to the caption. You can add files in any format except executable files of up to 5 megabytes. Attach tickets, maps, checklists, instructions, or other additional materials. Divide long texts into passages up to four lines with the delay element. This element will imitate typing by showing the typing animation and gives your user a rest before the next message. Click the Add button and choose the Delay element. Note that the delay block can't be the last element in the message. Enter a value in seconds, from 1 to 5. On a paid plan, you can also add audio and video messages to your flow scenario. Maximum upload file size is 20 megabytes. Thus, you can attach video lectures and voice consultations directly in the bot without sending the user to third-party resources. You can gather information from users and save it to a variable for future use. Activate Wait for the Subscriber's Response option. Users can enter any value, and you only need to set up the type of validation for this value. For example, string for text values, number, date, email address, phone number, URL, regular expression, geolocation, or image or document. Add a warning message for users who enter the wrong value, and choose the variable where you want to store information. You can also choose the period to wait for a response for a user. If the user does not respond within the selected time, the wait for a response from the user will expire and the chatbot will no longer check the entered data for validity to record the user's response. Also, under the message, you can add quick replies buttons, so users can choose from predefined responses instead of typing their own. To do this, click on the Quick Replies button in the User Input Element window and enter values for the buttons. You can add up to 10 buttons. You can add quick replies for data with the string, number, and regular expressions validation types. For data with the phone and email validation types, the messenger prompts the users to use the contact details of their account. You can connect the next element to the message block using buttons of all types or the user input option. You can also continue the flow without waiting for the user's response. To remove a connection between blocks, double click on the line and click the delete button. Drag a line from the blue drop of one element to another element to connect them. Add an action element with which you can do the following actions with the subscriber's data. Open the chat. Open a chat with the subscriber in the conversation section. Unsubscribe from the bot. Unsubscribe a user from bulk and automated messages. Block in a group or channel. Block a subscriber in a selected group or channel. Unlock in a group or channel. Unblock a subscriber in a selected group or channel. Add tag. Assign a tag to a subscriber. Remove tags. Remove a tag assigned to a user. Add variable. Set the variable value to be assigned to the subscriber or updated. You can also create a new variable. Send webhook. Send a post request with user data to your URL. Create deal. Create a deal in your CRM when a specific action is performed, for example, clicking the Buy button. Notify me. Send a message on behalf of your chatbot to the system chatbot or Telegram group. You can simplify your bot's structure and move your user to another flow. To do this, add an element, then choose the Flow element and select the flow you want to link from the drop-down list. The Flow element will be the last element in this branch of your existing flow. You cannot link it to another element to continue the original flow. Add a filter element to segment customers based on their personal data. You can filter them by variable value, all types, string, number, email, phone, and link. Contact name. Assigned tag. Interaction with your flow. Campaigns received. Last activity. Subscription date. Day of the week. Trigger date. Trigger time group or channel membership, payment,
Chat opens. Incoming messages. Unread messages. Combine conditions by adding the operators any or all, or add independent additional conditions. After adding conditions, add the additional flow elements to each of the filter element options if the condition is met, green dot, or not met, red dot. Add the pause element to set the period during which no automatic messages are sent to the subscriber. The pause can be set in seconds, minutes, hours, or days. You can choose the pause in between using the time period option or until a specific time using the till date or till time option. Select the time period option and set a pause between sending flow elements from 1 second to 60 days. Use it in a flow, for example, to warm up a client. After the specified time, the next message will be sent. Also, you can select till date or till time and set a delay until a particular time. For example, you can use this option to indicate business hours or promotion hours. Also, using the pause element, you can set the condition for executing the next element of the flow, always or when the subscriber is inactive. Add the API request element to send requests to a third-party server to create objects or retrieve data. Get data and use it in your chatbot messages. Select the type of request and enter the URL to send the request to. After testing the request and receiving a successful response, configure the mapping settings. If you need to save the value from the response to a variable, select the key from the received request and the variable to save to. If you want to use the received value once without saving it to a variable, copy the JSON path from the response field and use it in the next message element. You can read more about the API documentation by the link in the video description. Add the random choice element to send elements from your chatbot script at random for A-B testing, creating quizzes, and more. You can customize the size of the recipient group for each option, send random information, and test different chatbot scenarios. Drag the item random choice element to the working area, connect it to the element you start branching the script from. When you finish creating your flow and have looked over all of the elements, save your flow before exiting. Click Save and send it to yourself to test the flow and check if everything is working correctly. You can also save an updated version of the flow while leaving the current version unchanged. To do this, click Save as a new flow. The new flow will be saved in the Flows section. Note, your flow must have at least one message or action element. After that, you can exit your flow by clicking Save and Exit. You can see the number of messages sent and read, redirections from the flow, both in total and separately for each message in the Bot Structure tab. It's also possible to track statistics on button clicks in flow messages and statistics for users for whom the action and pause elements were triggered. Click the number on a button to see who clicked the button. Also, SendPulse allows you to track general statistics on a chatbot in the Statistics tab.